Redneck City next devil beat dang the punk it together rockin' turbo twang By the grace of God I was born and raised in ordinary small town USA took it to the top every night and day from my working to a loving to the music that we played up through the valley down the mountain top when the stars came out those backwoods would start to rock shaking up the country and the window sills with those old boots stomping and those killer fiddle fills your body turn up the radio nice and loud gonna hoop gonna holler gonna come on wound with a heat a on a driving sound we're kicking out that's gonna get on down kissing in the moon not a partying gang it ain't hillbilly Rockin' Turbo Twang Yeah <laughs> Hand in hand down a dusty road Playing in the sand Where that Missisquoi River flowed A lover's heartbeat And an old banjo That's all that we need For jumping pure on your gold Your body turn up the radio nice and loud a hoop, gonna holler, gonna get on round with a he and a holler, driving sound. We're kicking up dust, gonna get on down. Kissing in the moon, not a partying gang. It ain't hillbilly. We're rocking turbo twang. Turbo twang. Turbo twang. Everybody knows life ain't always a party, but you celebrate. Turbo twang, oh yeah. It's turbo twang, rockin' turbo twang, rockin'. Turbo twang. Rockin', rockin', we are rockin', rockin'. Hey bro, I love it man. Wayne Warner, my good. good buddies on the show. Thanks, buddy. How are you doing tonight? Doing good. We are. You are rocking the whole Nashville. Backstage Nashville. Self pen book. All the backstage stuff. You are just jamming. Welcome again, Wayne. Doing Warner, busy. To my, yeah, welcome to the Who Magoo again. I think your fourth time on the show. We've talked so much about all your good foundation work with, uh, you know, God Bless the Children, Na- Taylor Swift, Nashville, All Star Choir, all those things in the past, all in fun. And now you are hitting the books with so much inside what? info. Tell us what your day is like and uh, give us a little synopsis of what's going on for you. A whole new world, and hey, Tom, and hello to your listeners. It's great to be back on the on the Who Magoo Show, man. <laughs> yeah. And great to talk to you, Tom. Great Thank to you. talk to you. Thank you. Yeah, a whole new, my first time talking to you as an author. You know, whoever thought the the world of music would be uh, taking me into holding the pen and and uh, taking yeah. me into this world, but you know, it's it's another part of the journey, and uh, you know, it's been fun and it's been interesting. It's a uh, a whole new way to connect with people, and it's it's a it's a new forum for me, and it's it's certainly been fun. It's it's been great to get uh, uh, feedback from people on a different level. You know, it's it's neat to get um, to get mail from people and to connect with people who are talking about a melody and and a beat and um, and 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 rhymes. But to hear uh, to get people connect with you. Um, as you, that's something that's totally foreign to me, and to to connect on something on a personal level, 
uh, is really um, something that I never I thought would happen um, to this degree. And so, so writing backstage Nashville was well it was just that was a journey, and it continues on uh, as a journey in this connection with people and and uh, just a whole new dialogue. And it's just it's just been really, really uh, it's been fun, definitely fun. Well, you're such a down-to-earth person, and like Kathy Stewart, um, such a great person that we know together through music, or I have played her music last night with I yourself. I love Kathy. Yeah, and, and you connect with everybody, because your book is, Wade, when you read what you're talking about, you're not all into the glitz and the glam, and, and all that's very uncomfortable. Why are people thinking Wayne Warner is somebody, when when you were growing up, they were bullying you? And, and that's what you're getting into the words, and you know, and all the journey in life. And, and you bring that yeah. out, you know? Yeah, you know, uh, it's you know, it, it's funny that people have caught on to a bullying theme in this book, and I think, I think, sadly, in some ways, I think uh, so many people, and I think probably everyone, in some yeah. way, feels bullied in life, uh, whether it's in the workforce or in school, or even growing up with their parents when they didn't get it, when they, you know, had to, had to be home at a certain time. But yeah, I guess there is a bullying theme throughout the book that people are are connecting to. And I'm really glad now that there's some talk about trying to get the book in schools because, as you know, um, you know, bullying is an epidemic now right. that uh, we are trying to address. And so I'm really glad, you know, I never thought about that during the pending of the book, but I'm really glad that that is making that connection, uh, that connect, that it connecting in that way. And so, uh, if they can get that into schools or we can get this into the schools and it can help some way, um, in that forum, then, that would just be another great reward um, uh, of this process. Yeah, you know, and getting ready for you tonight, I've talked to you so many times and know your your stories and your background. And the bullying part is because when you were telling me about your singing voice early on, you know, people were critical. And to me, being a fan of everybody I play, I watch the voice, I watch the view, I, people outplay, I like everybody. I don't think anybody's critical. I mean, that's how I look at life in your voice. But you were telling uh -huh. me how you had to work on that or come through that self-confidence, should I say, because people were critical a little right. bit. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say, Wayne. You've always stood for yourself, and that's what makes you more than music, uh, you know, recovery and uh, foster children. And, you know, and that's part of your book, right. too. You know, just your life. You were ready to pen a contract with a record company, and just because of... You know, we can get into that little story, too. That's all in the book, too. Because your children are foster children. And that was not making what they thought what they needed to have at that time. Right. Well, I, I adopted I adopted a couple of boys. It's, yeah. it's uh, one of the, it's the, the most important gig in my life. And uh, they are the biggest hits in my life. Yeah. And so, uh, via those, my sons, we became a biracial family. And that did cause that did cause some some problems uh, in my music career, and it's something that uh, you know we over we overcame. Uh, but it did it did certainly bring an awareness um, to to us and to our family that we just weren't aware of um, that it existed in the uh, in the genre that that we had to deal with that we didn't see you know that we didn't think we were going to have to deal with in that capacity. And, um, you know, and it's sadly, that's something that's still going on, uh, you know, in the industry and something that I hope, um, you know, I hope gets addressed. And, and uh, but it is still a factor. And, and I guess not just in this industry, but uh, I guess everywhere. And it's something that uh, uh, something we need to look at as a nation and as a people. Oh, very much so. I'm, I'm just so sad at things I'm hearing and people reacting to things like that. And when you told me the story about that, because, you know, Wayne, you've called me and we shared it. And I, and I actually got a script of your book before it was released to kind of go through. So I still got to get a video for you. I'm going to work on that. I have a formal review for you on the show. Um, good. But, good, yeah, good. Yeah, but you shared that with me, how you were ready to sign, but they found out. And that wasn't the image that the record company wanted to have. They didn't want you to say that you weren't have, had adopted children. And I was like, my. Well, they didn't want me to say that I had adopted black children, and and that was. Yeah, I didn't even want to that say that. And, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, well, that's yeah, but that was the reality of it. And um, so, I walked away from that. I walked away from that label, and um, and you know, I'm hoping that that has changed somewhat since 
since that time, but it's, it hasn't changed enough. It's still a reality. Um, you know, um, you know, it's it's as simple as this: the ACM Awards are in their are in its fifty fourth year. And I'll just ask you this: Who was your favorite black host? <laughs> you know, and uh, the answer is they haven't ever had one. Not in fifty four years of the as the ACM, the American Country Music Awards, had a black host or a black co host. And that's just the reality of it. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not saying anything other than that's a fact. And I just hope that that's something that uh, can be worked on. You know, as as a proud proud father of two. Um, black sons, I would like to think that if that was something they wanted to pursue and they wanted to pursue a career in country music, that maybe someday they could be a co-host of the American Country Music Awards. You know, here yeah. we have now had a black president. Uh, we yes. live in a day now where we have had a black and an orange president. It would be nice if we could have <laughs> a black host of the Country Music Awards. You know, that's just where we're at. And, right. um, so yeah, the book does address that, and it's just a, it's just a, it's it's just a, it's just a reality. Yeah, and, and the power of you know, I do believe in the power of music. I did learn that um, in the project that you spoke of, God bless the children. The yeah. power of music and the power of unity through it. So I do believe that that you know that day will will come. Yeah, but I yeah. do believe that it also has to be that has to be talked about it has to be acknowledged you know and so um you know and, and there it is in black and white in in backstage nashville it's it, there you know it's it's, yeah. it's discussed and yes it's going to bring controversy it's going to bring you know it's going to bring some some backlash for me but uh, as the father of of two african-american boys i you know i felt that was important to do and Wayne, I gotta tell you, I did share it with a friend of mine who's a, a buddy of mine, you know, from the city I've known forever. And I told him that story about, you know, you can, and he was like, yeah, we need a long ways to go. So I, you know, I go, mm -hmm. wow, I was just shocked that that'd be happening today. So I'll tell you what, why don't we take a little break? Let's play right now. God bless the children featuring Taylor Swift and Nashville All Star Choir. And again, this is a, a Dave Thomas Foundation, correct? that you guys did back then for foster children? It is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Let's roll that right now. We'll be back with Wayne Warner. Backstage Nashville. Thank you. Somewhere out there He sits all alone Mommy to come home She says she has bills to pay That he's only in her way Listen close Can't you hear him crying? I need someone Who needs She fell again Listen close Can't you hear her cry? I need someone Who makes me I need someone Who loves me 